just want to speak what God would have. The book of Isaiah, chapter 28. Isaiah 28, 10 through 13. I want to speak for just a moment on a subject that I believe the Lord has for us this morning. In the last several years, messages have, God has brought messages easy, and I was sure when, when I started studying that was it. This particular message I wrestled with, but I believe with all my heart, it is what God wants. I want to speak for just a moment the gospel. Precept upon precept, line upon line, a sure foundation. Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 10. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. Here a little and there a little. For with stabbing lips and another tongue will he speak to his people. Now can I just throw something in that won't cost you a dime. Nothing to do with the service. But if you don't know about us holiness folks and about Pentecost, it tells about it right there. Verse 12. To whom he said, This is the rest therewith you may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing. Yet they would not hear. But the word of the Lord was unto them precept upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line, here a little, there a little, that they might go and fall backward. Remember, they would not hear. That they may go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. Father, I thank you for the gospel. I thank you, Lord, that this gospel has been laid line upon line, precept upon precept. I thank you that it is a sure, a tried and true foundation upon which we stand in Christ Jesus our Lord. Not our works. Our works of righteousness is nothing but filthy rags. But because, oh hallelujah, of the work that you've done on the cross of Calvary, And by our simple faith in believing in that finished work, we now are part of the family of God. I thank you, Lord, for that blessed hope, both sure and steadfast. In Jesus' name, amen. Keep your Bibles there. We're going to read some more scriptures here in just a moment. And again, I'll try to be very brief. The gospel is God's way. I, for one, am just about sick and tired of denominations. I'm a member of a denomination. I'm thankful for that denomination. But Church of God's not going to take me anywhere. The gospel is not owned by any denomination. For you see, it's not holiness way or Baptist way or, or Presbyterian or Methodist way. It's none of those ways. It is God's way. Man has tried to add to and take away. But his gospel is pure and it is simple. It is line upon line, precept upon precept. You see, God created all. I was thinking this week how, how, and I'm trying not to be Sometimes I'm politically incorrect. But I I think about atheists, and I think about, and I don't really call it faith, maybe it's belief, but they've got to have a lot more belief than us. To look around at this world, how it is so fit together, and how it all works together to believe that it happened by an accident. My, 
Why? What kind of belief does it take to believe that? I got amused this week. Sometimes I'll watch animal shows and they start in on their thing and, and Mary Jane gets mad wants to cut it off. I want to listen to how foolish they sound. And I sat there and laughed at the foolishness of them trying to explain God away. The heavens declare His glory. The very heavens, oh hallelujah brother David, tells us of God. God created all things and He created all things good. A lot of people say, oh, if God was so good and so loving as you talk about, why are our children in the salt mine? I'll tell you why. Because sin entered in. God created it all good, had everything just right. But sin came in. And with sin comes death. And destruction. For you see, the wages of sin is what? Death. Sin brings death. We can go all the way back in Genesis 3 and 15. We can see there that God had a plan. God speaks in Genesis 3 and 15 when man has just failed and sin has just entered in. You realize what God could have done? He could have destroyed mankind right there. He could have said, I'm going to create another creature. But I believe with all my heart, he looked down in 2015, Brother JB, and he saw me. And he said, I desire him. And he saw you. Through the endless ages, he saw us, and he desired us, and he loved us. The Lord speaks out in the garden in Genesis 3 and 15. He says, I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed, it shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. All the way through the Old Testament, in the Word of God, we see that scarlet thread of redemption. We see how Satan tried to destroy the plan of God. But he could not destroy the plan of God. We live in troubled times. We live in times when man's hearts are failing him for fear of things that are coming upon the face of the earth. But let me tell you as a child of God, Brother R.J., we don't have to fear nor be afraid. Because God has it all right here. Many times things going on we don't understand, we can't comprehend. But what we can do is hold to God's unchanging hand. And know, oh, hallelujah, that that peace will sustain us and will keep us. We see the scarlet thread of redemption. You see, we read in Revelation chapter 13 and verse 8 that Christ was the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. I want you to stop and think about this for just a moment. When God turns as He has created man and He says, let us, I believe speaking to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, let us make man in our own image. He knew right then, Brother Bobby, what it cost him. Christ knew. He knew right then because he was the lamb that was slain from the very beginning of the world. Is that not great love? That even though he knew what it would cost him, even though he knew the the pain and the agony that would be there, yet he desired us. The devil ever tell you that God doesn't desire you? He ain't nothing but a liar. God desires you. God loves you. You are the very apple of His eye. He could have stopped right there in creation and created another creature. But He loved us. Christ Jesus. You see, man sin. I don't care how many people stand behind how many pulpits today and tell you that God will have fellowship with sin. God will not. 
And God cannot have fellowship with sin. He will not. But He made a way. Brother Robert, He made a way. Because you see, I was born in sin. How can I get out of sin? I can't pay my way. I can't get good enough. I've told you the illustration how many times about you can't take something dirty and clean something up. You can't do it. It won't work. It's get dirty. You're just spreading the dirt. So I was without hope. How could I get to God? He's righteous. He's holy. He's without sin. And He will not have fellowship. How can I get there? How can I attain to that? Well, there's an age-old law that says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Brother Doug, do you believe in the blood? I sure do. From Genesis to Revelation. You're one of them old preachers. Yes, I am. There's no other way. Only the cross. Only the cross. You can't say enough Hail Marys. You can't do enough good deeds. You can't reform yourself to get good enough. It is only by accepting the finished work of the cross. And herein is the gospel, line upon line, precept upon precept. You see, Christ came and He lived a sinless life. He came down and He took on the form of man. The Word of God tells us in the book of Hebrews, He made Himself a little lower than the angels and He took on man. He unrobed himself of all of his glory and he came down and he took on man. He was God and yet he was man. Explain that, Brother Doug. I just did the best I can. He was man and he was God. And he was God and he was man. If you pinched him, he hurt. I'll be that first Christmas morning. He suffered as he'd never known what suffering was because he didn't know what it was to be cold, didn't know what it was to be hungry, didn't know what pain was. But on that first Christmas morning, You see, we have a high priest. We don't go to someone that that, that we can say, but God, you don't know how I feel. or or, or You've not lived here. You've not been in my place because He has. He has. I told you before, when it comes time to comfort, I'm not a good comforter. I try with all that's within me. But I can never come up with the right thing to say. But I'll never tell you I know how you feel because I don't. But He can tell me that because He does. He came, He lived a sinless life. He went to the cross willingly. You see, the price had to be paid. Blood had to be shed. But in our veins, there was unholy blood. But in His veins, He was the seed of of a woman, born of a virgin, born without sin, lived without sin. And he went to the cross, and there he nailed not his sins, but my sins and your sins to his cross. Brother Doug, how then do we come? By believing and receiving the finished work of the cross. Man, take it and they try to complicate it. They try to add all these rules and this easism and schisms. It's not complicated. The Word of God tells us, Brother Bobby, that even a wayfaring stranger can find his way simply by coming and allow Christ Jesus to redeem us to forgive us of our sins, to wash us and cleanse us and make us a new creature. All things pass away and all things become new. To believe in Him and to believe in that finished work that He's done. Line upon line. I'm reading a book right now by Josh McDowell. It's getting so complicated for me and my little mind that I had to lay it aside every once in a while. 
He began to tell about, and I'm no mathematician, don't even claim to be, but just 40 some prophecies, and there were many hundreds more that came to pass in Christ, in His birth, and in His life, and all the things. 40 some prophecies that come to pass. It was staggering amount. I can't even, it was like a tree into one that it could even take place. Christ needs no proof. The Word stands upon its own. He lived, He died, and our whole hope hinges on the fact that He rose again. How do you know He rose again, Brother Doug? Because He lives, oh hallelujah, within my heart. You see, verse 12 talks about that rest and that refreshing. That's what is a rest and a refreshing to me today. That I know, that I know, that I know. You can take scriptures and twist them and argue with me all you want to. You you might even get me all twisted up. But there's one thing you can't do. You can't take what Christ done for me. Because I know, oh hallelujah, I know on that day when he came in and Brother Larry, his love forgave me and washed me and cleansed me and changed my life. And he has walked with me all the way. Yet there were those who the word of God tells us would not hear. And verse 12. Man, you see, want to do it their way. Man want to walk in their direction. They want it all in a nice little package. They want to come shake a preacher's hand, sign a card, give so much in the offering every week. You know, what? if I've done wrong, I'll give a little extra in the offering. It'll be all right. And just march right in. It doesn't work like that. It's God's way is that we give our heart and our life unto Him and He changes us line upon line. Now a problem we've had in the church, and, and I'm going to meddle just a second and I'm going to close, is we expect a new Christian to come in and live and act like somebody that served the Lord for years. But it's line upon line. Precept upon precept. We grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That word is line upon line, precept upon precept. As I read from Genesis and I get on into the Old Testament and I see the hand of God, it lays line. It lays me a foundation. It puts something there that I can see as solid, that I can stand upon. And then I get into the New Testament and there's precept upon precept, line upon line, foundations. And I grow in the grace and in the knowledge of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, church, I'm going to talk to you for just a minute. You know me well. And you know what I say? I say with love. I believe with all my heart, God is getting ready to send a revival. Not just here. I believe across the world. I believe there's going to be an outpouring of the Spirit of God as we've never seen. I believe missions are going to be blessed. Those who are serving God and have their mind and have stand upon line upon line and precept upon precept. And I believe with all my heart God's wanting to use this church. But let me tell you this. Let us be very careful. Brother Doug, are you fearful? No, because I know the God I serve. Let us be very careful that we stand line upon line Precept upon precept. What are you saying, Brother Doug? I'm saying I wouldn't want to be the one. Come on. A tool in the hand of the old enemy to try to tear down and destroy. What are you saying, Brother Doug? Well, can I just be plain? 
when Brother Blabberjaw <laughs> or Sister Know-It-All calls you on the phone and starts saying anything besides uplifting God in the church and God, hang it up. Say, I love you, but you pray. They call and say, well, the church should have done this, or the church should have done that, or pastor should have done that, or people should have went there. Say, you just pray for them. God bless your heart. Click. Man. When you go out in this community, hear me. And I won't care if you tell others that maybe not here this morning. When you go out in this community, yeah, we're going to stumble and fall. We're probably even going to act ugly sometimes. But when we do, make it right. You know when you do. Holy Ghost lays it right on your heart the second you do it. Don't walk away and have to go back. That's harder. I've been there. Make it right right then. Line upon line. That way when they see you on the local TV program and you're up there singing in the choir with that smile on your face, they're going to say, you know, that person was willing to come apologize to me. They must have something. Line upon line. Precept upon precept. I'm going to close. He said there was those who would not hear. Those who would not receive. And those who would not receive and those who would not accept were broken. They were snared and taken. Verse 16, 17, and 29. And I close. Of Isaiah 28. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation of stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste by simple faith in Christ Jesus. Verse 17, Judgment also I lay to the line and righteousness to the plummet. The hell shall sweep away the refuse of lies and the water shall overflow the hiding place. Verse 29. This also cometh forth from the Lord of hosts, which is wonderful in counsel and excellent in working. Right here in the midst of God talking of judgment, if you'll read before this chapter, you'll see that great judgment is coming to Israel because they will not follow God. But right here, right in the very midst of judgment... God proclaims that there is still mercy. And He proclaims that there is mercy that will come in Christ Jesus. Even though He knows they're going to reject Christ and turn Christ aside, yet that cornerstone, that sure foundation will be there. Church, we live in a day and an age of shaky foundations. You know I'm no politician. Thank God. But when both sides of the aisle, you can get mad at me if you want to, but when both sides are as crooked and as ungodly as they are, Our nation needs prayer. And we are on shaky times. Does that mean I get somewhere in a corner and I hide and I sit there with fear? No, sir. Why? Because God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of love and of a sound mind. And whatever happens, God has me right here. Because I'm standing on a sure foundation, line upon line, precept upon precept. Father, (laughs) thank you, Holy Ghost. 
Thank you for your strength, Lord, and your presence and your anointing. Lord, I believe this word has gone forth, and I believe it has accomplished. And I believe it will bring to pass what you send it forth to do. I pray for those, Lord, who heard the word here this morning, who later will hear it through the radio and through the website, and through YouTube and through the television, the different ministries of the church. Let it be used for you, for your glory, for your honor, that the church might be strengthened. I pray, Lord, if there's one here this morning or later that does not know you, that they're not standing on that sure foundation. Let this be the day. In Christ's name I pray.